very welcome to the program. Can Indian launches really remove the, the U.S. ones from the market? Is this going to be a sizable cut for the U.S. here? You know, I think the charge is not uh, accurate because it's very protectionist on the part of some of these U.S. space launch companies to claim that uh, we are subsidizing our uh, space launch industry. The fact is that, you know, we do frugal innovations. Our uh, Mars mission has been far less expensive than what any other country in the world has done. We have lower labor costs. We have lower costs of other factors of production. So I think basically we are competitive. We've got a comparative advantage. Our space launch industry, commercial space launch industry has taken off in the last few years, uh, last three years, we've been in a sweet spot. We've launched 28 satellites of nine countries, all at an economical cost and with the highest success rate. So I think we have, you know, like our IT sector, like our pharmaceuticals, we are competitive in this field. And if the American companies are unable to compete, that's how they, you know, uh, cry out sour grapes that, you know, mm. we're subsidizing and that uh, Congress should get in. So I think, unfortunately, it's playing into the protectionist in instincts of some politicians in Congress and I hope that they will not go down the line of uh, trying to ban this because at the end of the day, American companies that want their satellites launched benefit from Indian facilities. Well, there is a sizable gap, though, is in, in pricing here. Can Indian launchers really, like, despite the price, are Indian vehicles equivalent in their capabilities? Because we're seeing that India is producing them four times as cheaply as the private market in the U.S. can. Yeah, but there's one difference, of course. Our capabilities are still building up. We don't yet have the capacity of what we call the geo um, stationary uh, satellite launch vehicle. We only have a polar satellite launch vehicle, which means that once we have the more advanced version, we can do heavy uh, satellites that go much, much, much further. Right now, we are mostly doing lighter satellites and that don't go that far. But nonetheless, Unless there's a huge growing market for this as a demand. Overall, my statistics say uh, India has launched 57 commercial satellites of 21 countries in the last several years. And we are successful at that. Our Prime Minister Modi has called it a matter of immense pride and joy for India that we are now able to offer a platform for other countries to be able to launch satellites that are useful and beneficial for uh, various civilian needs. So I think uh, one must credit developing countries and help them build their indigenous care capacities. This is a strategic asset of India, but at the same time, there is increasing private sector involvement. So I think it's overall a positive thing that we are also becoming yeah. a player in this. U U.S. companies, though, are complaining about the contracts uh, with cheaper Indian producers to their congressmen, aren't they? Do you think that this, uh, this pressure by the U.S. Congress might in turn affect India's uh, progression in this market? No, you know, as I said, we are pretty diversified. We are launching satellites for countries far and wide, um, you know, from the northern um, hemisphere to the southern, to west and east, to Latin America, Africa. Many countries are approaching this. Now we have a kind of a satellite launch diplomacy. We are, Prime Minister Modi wants to launch a satellite for all the South Asian countries, which we call the SARC Association here. We will have a SARC satellite this year, which is launched from India. So we are growing. Our capabilities are growing. So some of these protections and negative uh, uh, you know, tendencies from the U.S. is not going to stop us. Rather, they are going to miss the boat if they uh, drop India from their list because they have less of a satellite launching capacity than the number of satellites that are out there. So the demand uh, is outpacing the supply, and the Americans will have to look out. And India is one option, just as outsourcing is logical, and I don't think it can be stopped. Uh, just finally, the plans, as you're saying here, about Indian space, they are ambitious, they are developing as well, as you mentioned, but is the Indian industry likely to become a competitor for the U.S. any time soon? Do, do you think that's going to happen? Over the long run, certainly. Uh, we are also developing our own regional navigation satellite system like the U.S.'s GPS system. Uh, we have benefited a lot from Russian cooperation in this field, and uh, I think over time, uh, we will develop the capacities. India is going to become a great power. And now it's not just land, air, and sea. It's also outer space that is increasingly becoming an arena for great powers to be able to project their abilities and capabilities. And so I think uh, in the long run, yes, in 10, 10 to 15 years, I see that happening. At the moment, um, you know, the major powers still uh, dominate this field of commercial satellite launches. But we are like this little upstart that is coming up rather fast. Uh, and uh, I think we should be encouraged 
rather than blocked uh, through these protectionist uh, cases in the U.S. Congress. Dr. Shram Choli, a professor and dean of the Jindal School of International Affairs, thanks for your time and thoughts this hour on RT International.